to be crystal clear, this isn't a rumor. This isn't like gossip. He literally admitted, he confessed to. Wake up and win. Wake up and win. What's up, guys? Welcome back after a wonderful Christmas, hopefully yep. for everybody, and Happy New Year. Uh, it's Blaze and Christina, the Wake Up and Win podcast. It's been a couple weeks. It's been too long. Yeah, it's been a bit. We got the sniffles a little bit, so we got our Kleenexes ready. So mm -hmm. uh, we went down and saw the family. Yes, went to Texas for Christmas. 15-hour drive with three kids. The, the way there, adventure. The way there was like... We, we knocked it out in like seven hours, then seven hours we were there. Yep. Like seven hours one day, seven hours the next day. The way back? We did four hours, hotel, five hours. Five hours, hotel. Four hours. It took us three days to get it back. It was bad. It, so. was, it, it was rough. And Blaze Storm had the Nipples. snots. Judah yeah. screamed. We're all struggling a little bit. <laughs> but we're back and... Um, and we definitely have not disappeared. We've had people reaching out, hey, are you okay? Are you guys okay? <laughs> uh, been a little bit active on X, but um, we're ready We're ready to catch people up. There's been a lot that's gone on in the IHOP KC world, and uh, we got a lot to cover tonight. We do. We do. So let's dive in. Let's okay. dive in. Um, so we, we stopped right before... Everything went down. Everything went down. Three resignations in the past two weeks. Yep. Three resignations, uh, two ELT members, one staff member that we talked about on our podcast. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, let's see, they also put out a statement about... Um, Veronica. Veronica, uh, who would be the person from... The, the intern from 2014. And... The uh, talked about an affidavit. Eric Bowles has put out some interesting stuff, and then Mike Bickle permanently removed from IHOP Kansas City. Permanently separated. Yeah. IHOP KC and Mike Bickle are permanently and formally separated. So let's let's start with the uh, Seven Mountains okay. tweet. Yeah, we'll go in let's chronological order yeah, so everything will make sense. So um, let me just read this tweet and then we can talk about it. Okay, so this random guy called Seven Mountains pops up on Twitter um, right before Christmas. And this is one of his main tweets. Do you want to give any backstory on him, or let's just read it? Let's yeah, just read well, it. well, the ba the backstory on him is actually the tweet um, that I sent you. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, L all right. This is well, this is the one. Let's do this. Okay, let's start this there. This is the first one. Okay, yeah. this is from Seven Mountains. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to apologize for the delay in starting our journey for truth about IHOP KC and Mike Bickle. It has been an interesting morning. Let me explain. For those who do not know, my name is Stephen R. Magnuson. Until recently, I was working for Mike Bickle and his Friends of the Bridegroom Ministry. I officially resigned in a very long email to Mike Bickle on December 8th. I first discovered the truth about Mike Bickle and IHOPKC on November 29th and have been working to put this dark puzzle together ever since. As you can imagine, a real firestorm started, yes started after yesterday's post informing Eric Bowles, the Minister of Truth, for IHOP KC, that our journey to real truth begins today. That was the last thing any of them wanted. I wasn't following the process. Okay, sorry, not. So full disclosure, I spent 54 minutes on the phone with Mike Bickle this morning. It was a good conversation. No harsh words, no out of control emotions. I very strongly confronted him with many of the stories we will begin to discuss later today. I didn't back down on the need for these to be heard and not by some independent investigator who will take a year to decide what things the rest of us can know. No, the whole story needs to be laid out before the whole world with great detail and a repentant heart. Then I told Mike Bickle either he and the entire ELT of IHOP KC can voluntarily tell the story, or we will. I want to be clear. I'm not here to destroy Mike Bickle. He did that to himself. I'm not here to burn down IHOP. The current ELT of IHOP KC is doing that all by themselves. I want to see Mike Bickle and all the IHOP KC ELT in heaven one day, and so should you. My resignation letter to Mike Bickle contained the following. I reiterated that to him today. I am for you. You don't need a team of bulldogs willing to protect and defend your reputation at all costs. You need a group of mighty men ready to stand with a broken king before the throne of grace. 
dismiss your lawyers, fully disclose everything that has happened from the very beginning until now, be prepared to face the earthly consequences of whatever has been done, and I will proudly stand with you as one of those mighty men. So, let the journey begin. The next post this evening will be our first account of sexual activity on a worship team, IOPKC and the leadership response. So there it was. That was on, what was the date of this tweet? Uh, December, December 21st, 21st, 2023, right before Christmas. He drops this. The day before, he said he was going to do this. And then he had a conversation with Mike Bickle. Now, I can confirm that this conversation with Mike was had. He had this conversation with Mike. Um, this guy is legit. He's the real deal. And uh, go to, let's go to the other tweet to introduce him first. Well, actually, well, go to the, go to the go message. Go to the message that I just sent you. It's the Forerunner Cr well, Christian hold on. Fellowship. I kind of want to talk about him first. Okay, cool. Because the reason that it, like, he popped up and he said he was going to start, like, sharing stories and then you shared him and we're like, everybody follow him. I did, yeah. So his account went from, like, nothing to like 2,000 followers, over 2,000 followers in a matter of like a day, a day or, or two, so. Yeah. Um, and so then he got a lot of people responding to this nervous. Not just obviously IHOPKC and the ELT and Mike Bickle should all Ad obviously be nervous. Right. But also um, advocates. a lot of advocates. And whenever we say advocates, it doesn't necessarily Talk about that, mean so like, um, like, it doesn't mean the advocate group it's not like alan hood and Dwayne right. robertson just like people i guess the armchair investigators something us like armchair that. it's um, it's people that care about the victims and uh, it's people that care about and and a lot of them actually know the victims the mm -hmm. original jane doe and there's other jane does and then there's other women in the ihop kc community that have experienced um abuse and so because of that it's you guys got to understand the, these kind of issues if somebody just outs somebody online it can cause a lot of trauma for an abuse victim. So you don't want to just like be throwing out doxing names and stuff like that. Which we knew from talking to him before this that he was never going to do that. Right. That was never the plan. And that's why I shared him right. and said follow this guy because I knew that. That's why we were yeah. confident to like share his stuff. Yeah. Um, he was more about exposing the ELT and certain things without... Um, saying anyone's name, of course. But then also, you know, people were nervous that if he told certain stories, then some people could kind of figure out who they were talking about. Right. Which is totally understandable. But I think he was going to be um, careful. But anyways, the point here is that um, a lot of people, he got connected with a lot of people through this, which I think was helpful and for the best mm -hmm. because um, he didn't end up dropping anything Major. Intense, even though we all like want to hear, we <laughs> wanted him to because we want this out in the open. Um, we, we all want this we happen could just yesterday, drop a bomb like yesterday, and it'd be done with. But the problem is, there's collateral damage. Like, mm -hmm. and if you guys would, I'm gonna, I'm gonna encourage you guys to watch a couple documentaries. Um, parental guidance suggested, but like the Nexium documentary is the actually vow. really helpful called The Vow. And you might be like, What? What are you talking about? That's so intense. Yeah, it is, but you got to understand that there are women that have been through things that they never planned to go through those things and then it programmed them to do certain things after that mm -hmm. and so these people that are just like oh these women are all if there is a jane doe she's just complicit yeah, it's like and also there's a lot more complicated issues behind it especially just the original jane doe this is public knowledge from the royce report 42 male global influence meets 19 female no influence and very hungry to learn and grow 42 male global influence in the prophetic community who prophesy. hears directly from god and sees the angel michael and prophesies to her that she that his wife is going to die and he's going to marry her and they're going to lead the prayer movement together that's a big so so that's as a, a 19 female and i see these guys on twitter and they're just like you know, they're trying to throw Jane Doe under the bus and all these things. They're trying to dox Jane Doe. And it's like, it's it's so crazy to me that you even have to address this kind of thing. But it's just a lack of education. Um, it's a la lack of understanding of the power dynamics. Like, these guys clearly have no daughters. Mm -hmm. They're probably not married. And if they are, they probably have no daughters. Mm -hmm. And if they do have either of those, they literally probably are not doing well in their marriage. Because yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine that they would, like, think this way about their 
daughters. And I even saw one guy say, well, my daughter would never be that whatever. I'm just like, how ignorant is that statement? Like, Mm -hmm. these guys just don't understand what we're dealing with here. It's a power dynamic, and you add the spiritual to it, it's a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. So, So Stephen drops this. He gets some, you know, some backup and some kind of curbing by the advocate group. Then, well, not the advocate group. Well, sorry, the advocates. That's just advocates yeah. in general who are just want to protect the victims, which is something that I, you know, we want to do. We, we want to do, and also something that I love about like the IHOPKC community too is everybody is very careful and very aware, um, and they want to protect the victims. So I think that's yeah, like I get tweeted awesome. at throughout the day about certain things. And people are like, have you seen this? And I'm like, I'm not going to draw attention to this, mm-hmm. even though it could be damning for the uh, for the ELT or Mike Bickle. It could be exposing to a victim and the collateral damage of exposure. That's not on me to do. Mm-hmm. Like if that was my daughter that had experienced something, I wouldn't it wouldn't. That's on her to decide when she wants to tell that story Mm -hmm. and we see Jane Doe has already told the story and we'll see what future comes out but I I think there's more and there's more Jane Doe so anyway after that statement comes let's talk about because I know we want to introduce he introduced Mm -hmm. himself days later but let's do the this caused a stir this did okay so then after this um let's (laughs) here this <laughs> this email comes out from oh Forerunner Church. It says, Dear IHOP KC community, we have been informed that an individual plans to release details of extremely sensitive private information about members of our community. We don't know the exact timing, but we understand it will be soon. We felt it was important to make you as a community aware of this. This individual has stated online that the ELT must come forward and reveal these details, or he will. However, we do not know which incidents he is referring to. We are which act- of the many? I know, right? <laughs> My lord. We are actively trying to establish communication to diffuse this situation. Well. So they like freaked out, sent out an email to everyone drawing more attention to, to this. It was just like wild to watch this happen in real time. In real time. And also, at the same time, you had people coming at Steve online. Oh, my gosh. Our phones. Our phones. Because Blaze had promoted him and said, you guys follow this. I'm not kidding you. Our phones were, like, blowing up. You're like, yo, when's he going to drop it? Calls. When's he going to drop it? Or what is he doing? He doesn't need to do that. Who does He's he think he is? He's messing up everything. Guys yeah. always come in here and make a... Um, pissing contest <laughs> out of this yeah people were saying that too. <laughs> that's what they said um which i totally get um but it was just a lot meaning like meaning wanting to be the hero of the story wanting to be the, wanting the, to be the one to like have all the information and making it about that um which i totally get how that could happen and does happen um but but i don't think that's what he was doing but at the same time it all worked out i think in my opinion, it all worked out because this really got him connected with, again, with advocates who can help him navigate this in a good way, but also got him connected with the media. So, guys, he could have tweeted this that night and, like, actually dropped some bombs and people would have discredited him and be like, oh, some random Twitter account. But yeah. now he is working with the media, which means it's going to have a bigger audience. We're all going to be able to share it, not to mention whenever it goes to journalists, like they have to verify they stuff. They have to verify stuff. So it gives it more credit than just like a random Twitter account. And that's why people, even with us, we get certain information come to us and like we're not journalists. We report on public information, but we're not trying to break stuff and then get ourselves in a situation where we're trying to like fact check all day. Uh, we would rather report on public information already. Yeah. For sure. So, so boom. He so let's us. read this too. <laughs> but before that, I want to just say, um, he says, they said, uh, go back to the statement real quick. They said, we don't know which story he's trying to talk about. Like, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Like thinking that's a good thing to put in your email. But like, there are so many. It must have been. Have it, no idea it must have been Eric Bowles. Sorry. Um, but yeah, it's like, okay, so if it was if it was just the one Jane Doe from 26 years ago, then you would know exactly what it was. And after, but it's not just that. There's so many stories. This is like a deep history of mishandling 
abuse well, allegations. Where do we want to start? We want to start with Paul Kane and um, the reason why he got kicked off of IHOP campus. We would like to start with that because their stuff that goes all the way back then mm-hmm. um, with sexual misconduct uh, with Paul Kane and that those stories run deep. Um, how far do you want to go back? But they, but there are lots of stories. You want to go with current ELT, current ELT that just resigned, current ELT currently, uh, former ELT from years past. Like what, do, what do we want to go with? What stories are necessary? Um, I, I'll say this, Mike Bickle in the conversation with Steve Magnuson so Steve was like Mike's chief of staff for uh, fellowship of the uh, or wait fellowship of the bridegroom, fr- or friends of the bridegroom ministry. So, so he speaking to Mike, he began to list the abuses that he knew of, and told Mike these are the things that need to come out. Here's the victims. He named people to Mike and made it very clear to Mike. So for them to say we don't know what he's talking about, Mike knows exactly what he's talking about. Multiple stories, Mike knew, but of course they're like. And, and Steve actually told me on the phone whenever, before he dropped this, he was like, Blaze, I talked to him for 54 minutes and I really hope it gets through to him and I really hope he comes out and repents. His soul's on the line in all this. Like, and I felt it. I felt what he was saying. Let's go to his introduction. Okay. So we know Do you want to read this real quick though? Yeah, the yeah. Tw- the actual tweet, Stephen's tweet with that. Um, good evening. First of all, let me confirm. I'm the individual you have been warned about. Secondly, let me assure you, I'm not dangerous as the esteemed minister of truth. He likes to call Eric the minister of truth, which is kind of funny. Which is from the book 1984. Right. Has led you to believe. I have no intention of releasing details of extremely sensitive private information about members of the IOPKC community. Unless, of course, you're Mike Bickle or the ELT of IOPKC. Then everyone knows your name anyway. They just don't know what you have done or allowed to be done. Mm. Information about the leadership of IOPKC may be sensitive, Mr. Eric Bowles, Minister of Truth, but it does not qualify as private, at least not anymore. To the victims who are concerned about being exposed, I share your concern. While I have never experienced your trauma, I will respect it and never tell a story without a person who did not give permission in advance. Well, okay, unless you're Mike Bickle or the ELT of IOPKC. Then the people you have been leading for decades deserve to know who their leaders really are. That's exactly right. It has been an eventful night, so let's end with this. Apparently, the ELT IOPKC is unaware of the numerous incidents of inappropriate sexual behavior at IOPKC by Mike Bickle or any of its leaders. I would like to refresh their memories by making a general statement about Mike Bickle and the leadership team of IOPKC over the years. The leadership style of Mike Bickle created a culture at IOPKC that permitted leaders engaged that permitted leaders engaged in inappropriate sexual behavior to remain in leadership to true. one degree or another. This is true. We know this. Yes, this perpetuated a cycle of inappropriate sexual behavior throughout the IOPKC staff that left wounded lives and broken marriages in its wake. The extent of inappropriate sexual activity in the IOPKC has never been openly addressed by Mike Bickle or the ELT of IOPKC. Now is your chance. You don't have to name names, but please explain to those that believe you and trust you and support you just how much inappropriate sexual activity has been around at KC all of these years, unknown to anyone but those on the inside. We are waiting, Mr. Eric Bowles, Minister of Truth, IAP KC. See, I'm not the monster they said I was, but it's time for the ELT to fully disclose everything that has happened. Stop waiting for stories that can be proven and only admit to what victims reveal. You know what you did. You know what you allowed. It's time to tell the truth. We aren't done. More is coming. No victims will be exposed. Only the leadership should be concerned about what is coming next. All right. So he said that on December 21st. Yeah, in 954. Yeah. With the song in my head right now is Jason Upton's old song. You probably, I don't even think we've ever listened to this album together. It's come into the light. He'll take away the darkness. It's a, it's a song about coming into the light. But that song is what's in my head right now about the ELT. Mm-hmm. And, you know, all I can think about with what's been going on in, in this is when you shine the light in a dark room, the roaches scatter. Blaze, are you calling the ELT or IOP roaches? No, but there's correlations, and you can watch who scatters as the light comes on. Those that aren't probably have nothing to hide. Those that are have a lot to hide. And, uh, you know, sadly, at this point in the game, 
there are so many Christian leaders that are waiting for more statements or waiting for more proof or waiting for this, that, or the other. You literally had Sam Storms, and we've already done a video about this, but Sam Storms came out and said, I believe, so Sam Storms, like he pastored with Mike Bickle back in the 90s. This guy is a pillar in the Christian community and in the charismatic Christian community. And he's respected across charismatic to cessation his lines, actually. He's a he's a solid theologian. Sam Storms, guys, Sam Storms. And he said, I believe Jane Doe and Mike Bickle is, uh, I'm very concerned about Mike Bickle and what he's done. And so what are these leaders waiting for? They're going, oh, it's just social media chatter. It's just this, that, or the other. And I'm going to give a lot of leaders the benefit of the doubt that they're just uninformed and they're just waiting on, you know, what are they waiting for? A video to surface of the sexual abuse? Like what what exactly are they waiting for? Um, But well, at this point, too, it's it's crazy because I get waiting if you're like, you don't know what's going on. You have no idea. You don't want to, like, make a statement about something. You have no idea what's going on. But at this point, Mike has come out with his, you know, statement, which was like, whatever we've already talked about that a concession right but also IAPKC has permanently um to to separated that. from from Mike Bickle and the ELT is resigning like multiple people are resigning Left from and right. so it's like what are you waiting for like it's coming out it's all happening like at this point you can Why? take a stand this is a safe time i get when it first happened no. maybe it wasn't a safe time for for you to stand it could mess up, up your ministry you know? or yeah but like now it's like all of these people are coming out like i don't know it's strange to me that i hop kc itself permanently will separate from mike, from mike bickle, bickle but you won't like what it's a good point right it's a good point real quick before we move on from steve let's go to his introduction that's the one i want to do that's that um let me read okay. this one all right who is this guy anyway lots of speculation out there and it's natural after all speculation quickly fills any void with unknown creates uh, that any void that the unknown creates okay some say seven mountains works for the elt or is a reverse trojan horse still others are saying he's just unserious full of drama and like sensational things for his own sick brand of attention or entertainment helping bring some clarity here my name is Stephen r magnuson i'm a former marine enlisting in the marine corps after high school um graduating from the university of iowa 1990 commissioned as officer four years later i left the corps and to pursue a legal career in 98, I graduated from Regent University with a master's in government and Juris Doctorate. I was admitted to the Virginia Bar, actively presently in California Bar. I began my practice as a constitutional litigator defending religious liberties in federal courts across the country. I spent most of my legal career as an international contract negotiator, putting together joint ventures and negotiating deals for large companies in the airline, oil and gas, banking, and renewable energy sectors. My work was primarily done in Southeast Asia specifically Indonesia and Singapore. Bottom line, I'm a serious person. I don't say things lightly. I was uh, first introduced to the teaching of Bickle in 1998. I lived in Virginia and then moved to California, so I listened to his messages long distance, attended occasional forerunner conferences. In January of 2004, I left Orange County, got married, and my lovely wife and I came to Kansas City to join IHOP KC staff. Just five months later, we decided to start our life together in Indonesia. We left KC, went overseas in 2004, Stayed connected to IAPKC as Cyrus Partners. That means people that gave, I think it's 1,000 or more a month or 500 or more a month. It's like a large number. I can't remember. All right. That means Seven Mountains has some uh, cash flow. Cash cash flow. Well, I mean, as a lawyer back in the back in the day. Um, he watched online and halfway turned around the world, from around the world. In 2015, they came back to KC, connected with IHOP again. His wife sang in the prayer room. They attended Forerunner Church, volunteered to help where he could. Um they were always around. 2017, he got on the IHOP KC, IHOP KC Finance Committee and the Board of Trustees. On occasion, Mike and KC, IHOP would invite him to strategize in strategy meetings to ask for business advice and contractual agreements or corporate structure. When COVID hit, he worked from home. That turned into working for IHOP KC Prayer Room or from KC Prayer Room. By 2022, Bickle began asking me to take more active role in the ministry world. The role continued to increase through 2023 as I functioned somewhat like the Bickle Chief of Staff. On September 1st, 2023, I began working full-time for Mike and IHOPKC with each paying a portion of my salary. 55 days later on October 25th, Mike pulled me aside and said, something is about to be revealed and I don't want you to be blindsided. What followed was Bickle telling me his side of the story in great detail. Are you fo- are you following, guys? This is like... So whatever you think about this guy's drop so far, this is his story, okay? Over the next few weeks, I had front row seat of what began to unfold around Mike. 
on the 8th of December, I had seen enough and sent a very long email to Mike setting forth reasons I was no longer able to be a part of his team. After my employment with in connection to both Bickle and IHOPKC came to an end, soon after my employment came to an end. What I've learned over the past two months, I cannot pretend I do not know. Now the question is, what do I do with what I know? Believe it or not, there is a plan. Anyway, hopefully that's helpful for people. People have been like, is this guy just like a troll? He's a... Somebody I saw said one he's guy, like controlled opposition. Controlled op, you know, just to get our eyes... Like, it's like... Unfortunately, guys, we're not that organized <laughs> to even do that. <laughs> Somebody else was like... Or they're not that organized. Yeah, or nobody is, it would is, be them honestly. doing it if it was controlled opposition. True, right? true. I guess yeah. so. But um, somebody else said, like, it showed a how somebody was posting something to the, to Eric Vols and it was the same statement twice. And somebody was like, somebody's writing, who's the ghost writer for these questions to ELT? I was like, bro, we are not that organized. There's yeah. no ghost writer. It's called copy and paste. It's the yeah. same question because we need it answered. Um, but anyway. That's funny, yeah. Um, anyway, that's a, let's, let's move along, I think. I think we get into Eric Vols. Let's get into the resignations, right? Well, we got to get into Eric's statement first, which is, um, which is, Stuart and Mike. Okay. So the three minute yeah. video, let's just play that. All right. So this is, yeah, we have these in order so far. Hang on. Bring it hang back on, to the Eric. Top. Hang on. What day was this? Okay. So, okay. So this is a December day 22nd. Freaking later. One day. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Let's see if it was even 24 hours. This one was 9 54. 9 54, December 21st. This was 8 07, December 22nd. So, so let's just provide some context because some people would say, People are literally saying Stewart stepped down for health reasons. And they're also saying Slyker stepped down for health reasons. I'm going, that is not what's going on here, folks. Literally, Seven Mountains says he's going to drop this stuff. Which, also, Eric Rolls didn't say anything about anybody's health in these. No. He didn't say anything about it. That's like coming out later, people are saying how. There's so much misdirection and so many lies. There's, And if you don't want to call it a lie, let's just call it lack of transparency left and freaking right if this guy eric is literally a man of integrity and all this stuff he's just a mouthpiece for an organization that is lying or hiding information the entire time so let's listen to all right let's uh, see this this yeah. is again december 22nd one day after seven mountains comes out with his thing all right greetings to all the ihop kc greetings. community here in kansas city and to the extended spiritual family across the world we have some sobering announcements to share with you. As of this morning, Stuart Greaves, executive director of IHOP KC, has resigned. He has also stepped down from the board of directors. Words cannot describe the impact this man has had in the IHOP KC community over the last 23 years. Thousands of people's lives have been impacted by his teaching, leadership, and love for Jesus. His time at IHOP KC included two decades serving as the head of the prayer room's night watch from midnight to 6 a.m. And for the past three years, he served as the executive director. The executive committee led by General Kurt Fuller, who took over the management of this crisis on Sunday, December 10th, will be temporarily assuming the executive directorship responsibilities. Since taking over management of the crisis, the executive committee has received new information to now confirm a level of inappropriate behavior on the part of Mike Bickle that requires IHOP KC to immediately, formally, and permanently separate from him. Immediately, formally, and permanently separate from Mike Bickle. So, so people that are waiting for something to say, make a statement about Mike, he was... So there's a, let's just quote Eric, a level of inappropriate behavior has been found. Now, they left enough nuance in there to, to say, because Mike conceded, but he, or confessed, but he said the major sexual, more intense sexual allegations are not true. Mm -hmm. So what is true enough for this to be a problem? Right, because this is after his statement. So we already knew he confessed, you know, that he had inappropriate activity 26 years ago, but something new, he said new information has come out. There's something bigger going on here. For but sure. we have no idea if it's with Jane Doe, with a different Jane Doe, with more Jane Doe's, something not related to any Jane Doe, something financial, something like it could be anything. It's just like it, it's like people could say, well, that's just private information. Just like take it as it as it is. 
the reason we're not taking it as it is is because we don't trust this organization with our children. Do you know that the majority of people that come through these doors are 18 to 25? Do you know that not until not until December 10th did they separate from a person, not talking about Mike, but Brad Tebbett, who had uh, confirmed allegations of sexual misconduct with a minor previously to come to IHOP? Like, guys, this is the organization we're dealing with. An organization that covers up or at least slow rolls issues and has, oh, they just have lots of mercy for people. No, mm -hmm. you have mercy at the at the detriment of our young people. People will surely wonder about details, but IHOPKC does not have permission from those individuals to share details while they are being vetted further by an independent investigator. Who's the independent investigator? Lathrop LP. Mm -hmm. which is the lawyer McNamara, who has been known to get churches off in these situations. So the independent investigator is not even clearly independent. Right. The privacy of any person impacted by misconduct is tantamount. And this only amplifies IHOPKC's conviction that a complete investigation should be conducted into the allegations of clergy abuse by Mike Bickle. General Fuller will ensure that this gets done. Our current focus remains a thorough and complete investigation of the reported allegations, and we pledge to then implement any and all changes necessary to church policies, procedures, and culture to ensure that IHOPKC does not travel down this difficult road again. We have met and plan to continue to meet with the advocate group in an effort to establish trust and common ground. We ask the community to pray for this process. For some, these words will surely come as a shock and might cause deep pain, confusion, grief, or even sadness. Obviously, this is more than a routine church announcement. People's lives and families are being directly affected, and we understand that. We ask that everyone please be considerate and respectful to all the parties involved, especially on social media. There is a way out of these difficulties, but it starts with calming things down rather than ratcheting them up. Please remember, we hold steadfast to Jesus, to his leadership. He is our source and our great reward. The 24-7 prayer movement that God started will continue. IHOPKC will stand in the gap for Israel and ultimately continue to proclaim the beauty of Jesus until his glorious return. That was a lot. That was a lot for three minutes the Friday before Christmas. Or maybe not the Friday. Was it well, Friday Well, that's, that's what you do, too, is you drop these things right before Christmas. Right. But I don't know that they were really planning to drop this. I don't this. know if they I were either. I think that it was... When you've got a guy saying he knows stuff, and then you have an emergency email go out to the entire community. Like, we had people sending it to us that were not even still in the community. Yeah. When I'm still on the email list, I guess. But this is what they sent to their church. Like, they're afraid right mm -hmm. now. And they're making sure nobody's checking social media, which is the opposite effect that mm -hmm. it had. Like, wait, what's happening? Everybody's like, let's see what this is yeah. about. But it's it's crazy. They combined all of that. So the director of IHUPKC is resigning. Also... We're going to permanently separate ourselves from Mike Bickle. Uh-huh. Also, let's talk about the third party and then blah, blah, all this other stuff. It's like, whoa, whoa, And Oh, and there's down. General Fuller. Oh, yeah. Um, and that wasn't announced just then. That had already been kind of announced. But uh, no, no, it wasn't. General Fuller had been brought in, but now he's going to be assuming the role of mm -hmm. director, apparently. Also, Isaac Bennett is apparently the spiritual pastor over the whole uh, whole prayer room community now. Right. Which that wasn't announced yet, but, but recently. But let's talk first about Stuart. Yeah, let's do it. Because I feel like we should break it down because they combined this all into one thing yep. so that we would like skim past it. Yep. But I feel like it deserves our attention. It does. And so I feel like too, well, go ahead. No, you. Say. Well, I just think it's so weird that if Stuart was the director and he's been there for two decades, that he can't come on video himself and make a, he can't write a letter. Like, you're just going to disappear and have this guy, this guy, this crisis manager come and like, it's so weird. It is. Don't you think he owes it to the community, to the people there I mean, to tell them that he, even just to say like, I'm resigning. This has been an incredible 20 years. Love you guys. The last right. two have been really rough. <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, and they knew this was coming. Stuart was met with by a gentleman two years ago, year and year and nine months ago, something like that, about 
the first level of allegations. A member of the community met with him about this. Mm -hmm. uh, Stewart spoke to Mike about it. We know this. Um, and so this is something that's not like new news to them. It, they just didn't know it was going to hit the fan. But, you know, you hide things long enough and things come out, you know. Things start to to shift. So let's talk about uh, Veronica's story for a second. And so maybe we can do a... You want me to pull up that... Uh, Eric's tweet about it or what? I don't have anything pulled up right now, so I'm not sure. I mean, sure. we can find it pretty... Hey guys, this episode is brought to you by Wake Up and Win Insurance. We help clients all over the nation with their term life, whole life, or universal life insurance, and we're definitely happy to help you with a consultation. And we're hiring all over the nation, full-time and part-time positions, work from home. Check the description below for more info. Easily. I mean, his reply is he says, he basically says, um, oh, are you talking about Veronica, mm -hmm. the girl that was you know, says that she was RAPE back in 2014, but Donna Edwards had picked her up. And when she was picked up, Donna signs an affidavit now saying that she was told it was consensual mm -hmm. and it wasn't RAPE. But she's come public multiple times since then and says, no, it was. And they pulled me into side rooms and grilled me over the details until I finally consented to say, okay, fine. But then she said, but I knew that it still was. So what 18, sorry, 19 year old girl can be met in a side room with a 45, 47 year old male, um, large and intimidating one to his own admission, uh, meaning Stuart Greaves, meeting with a 19 year old female about RAPE allegations and then pressured and pressured for the details over and over and over till finally they say, and now we want your accuser or the person you're accusing to meet in the room too. So they bring him into the room with her. This is over week on week on end, week on end, week on end, week on end. Mm -hmm. They bring her into him into the room and say, well, you need to listen to his side of the story. This is the whole Matthew 18 it's thing mind all blowing. over again. It's like their obsession with applying Matthew 18 everywhere it doesn't It's like a Pharisee. is nauseating. It's like they literally brought her abuser into the room and made her talk to him. It's so insane. We're going to be having her on our podcast soon, and she's going to tell her own story. But I'm telling – and she's already told her story on Heaven Bent, and, I mean, it's out there. But these guys, they're in self-protection mode, and that's why they forced – they ran Donna to sign an affidavit. Mm -hmm. They ran Donna to sign the affidavit. I think Stuart signed an affidavit too, saying that – saying – that they told her to go to the police. And she maintains that they did not. She maintains that they met with her multiple times over and over again to force her to, to basically convince her to recant her story. Mm -hmm. What do you do as a 45 or 47 year old educator with a 19 year old woman that tells you that they were RAPE when they were under your educational or religious care? You help them call the authorities. You don't meet with them over and over again to convince them that your version of these type of scenarios is true. Which that's the thing too about about this whole story is it, you know, she she said and I believe her that they like basically tried to convince her that she wasn't until she finally said, you know, like, okay, fine, I just need this to end. Just stop bringing me in these meetings. Like, I, I can't relive this anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but then. So years later, um, you know, like you said, the Heaven Mint podcast, she went to Forerunner Church to confront Stuart after all of these Mike Bickle allegations came out. And she came up to him, and this is recorded. Um, and, yeah, we'll have to do a whole episode mm -hmm. um, with her. But basically, she went up to him, and she said, you did me wrong. Like, you covered up my RAPE charge. And he said, I told you to go to the police. Which, and she which, said, I don't remember the story that way. And he said, which, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Which here's the thing about that is I feel like I don't believe that's true. I don't believe he told her to go to the police. But even if he did, it's like, is that your defense? You told a 19-year-old girl who comes to comes to you seeking help, needing help. You don't 
call the police with her, call the police for her, take her to the police. Like you just say, you know what I mean? It's like, take some responsibility here. These guys don't take responsibility. They don't take responsibility for any of this stuff. And that's why they resigned. That's why they're leaving their posts. That's why they're running from this. And people would say, oh, Blaze, you think you would sit there under it? Well, hopefully I wouldn't be involved in an organization this corrupt. And if I realized it was, I would do what Alan Hood did and step away and call it out. I mean, Alan stepped away when he realized that Tebbit was going to still be, I mean, that was part of the process for him was realizing that. Uh, Dwayne, I don't know what Dwayne's situa situation was, but I know right now they're all speaking up on behalf of Jane Doe, even though it affects their spiritual mentor mm -hmm. and their livelihoods. Frankly, I know mm -hmm. for a fact that Alan's ministry is actually having a hard time because he's coming out against IHOP against, it's not against, it's just like, it, which it makes sense. All of your supporters from IHOP followed you there. You have all these people who love IHOP and that is who support your current ministry. And now you're kind of coming out against them. So it makes people sense. People are yeah, not there's, there's not like on board a, with that. There's not like a play here for at the advocate group. It's well, like, the interesting thing too is the advocate group never wanted it to get this far. Like they tried to meet with the ELT yep. and they tried to, you know, tell them about what was going on and wanted to even meet with um, Jane Doe's husband and who was with them now? I can't remember. Was uh, it Dwayne Roberts? Dwayne, yeah. Dwayne. Wanted to meet with Mike, wanted to, you know, work this out. I think, I think internally. He said, Stuart asked me not to meet with you with a group. Yes, he's fine with, with you and me meeting alone, but not with a group. He insists that any process related to me goes through him not through a self-appointed governing group. That's Mike's email to Jane Doe's husband. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, I'm not going to allow. Stuart, Stuart will not allow me. It's just. It's so weird. These are such odd. And he brings up Matthew 18 in here, of course, as usual. Um, but all right, let's, okay. let's move on. Um, we've got a lot more to cover. So let's see here. I've got it right here. I've got this one. Do you want to do Tabit? Tabit. Let's go to Tabit. So yeah, if you guys remember... Um, on, what was it, December 2nd or 3rd or 4th or something, we did a video about, about Brad Tebbit. And it would be helpful if you guys want to go back and watch that video. We did a 45-minute or hour-long video mm -hmm. covering that whole story, the backstory of everything and why this is important. Apparently, like 10, 15 days after that, all of that was breaking, they told him, it's time to get going, yeah. but they call it a mutual separation. So let's do a quick, just very quick backstory on this. Okay. So this guy was um, a youth minister at a church in California, was it? Yep. In California. And somebody in the youth group, a 14-year-old girl's father passed away. They had her come to their house, and he had an inappropriate relationship with a minor. Mm -hmm. And he admitted to that, okay? So then he comes to IHOP. He's on staff, um, and he's there. And According to the, the minor who's now an adult, she said it was 14 years old, and, that she and was it was XCX. She was R-A-P-E-D. Yeah. yeah, and according to him, it was basically... Uh, and, it, and, and she was enough, 15 but... or 16, which is totally enough to say that person that did that in a ministry context should never work in ministry or around young people ever again. That would just be wise. Right. But you don't have to just be in a church to say that. Like even in any secular organization, if I put my daughter, if we put our daughter in a school and we knew that they said, yeah, this happened with a guy years ago, but he's a good guy now. We've never seen any problem since. I'd be like, are you guys dumb like yeah are you acting dumb are you enablers are you just like are or are you just so misguided in your mercy that, that you put people in danger that you put children in danger and that alone is it's it's negligence and it's completely irresponsible irresponsible on the part of all these guys and we know that dave slyker is the one that put him as the current who just stepped down, the current 
recruiter for IHOP U. That means you're re- recruiting 16, 17, and 18 year olds is into IHOP U. 14 to 17 year olds. 14 to 17 year olds Which recruiting the them. Same age My. as the girl that he or RAPED. So here's the thing, like just to like. Just to be crystal clear, this isn't a rumor. This isn't like gossip. He literally admitted, he confessed to at least molesting a minor. Okay? That's not there. Um, So, yes, he should not be on staff at a ministry. He definitely shouldn't be recruiting um, children to this, like Mm -hmm. teenagers to this. And that is not a – that is not an edgy opinion. Like, that is not – um, a woke mob coming at somebody. This should not be controversial at all. It's common sense. It's total common sense. It's not woke. It could be, it could be conservative, liberal. Everybody would be like, yeah, don't put that person over my kid. Yeah, and don't let them be talking to my kid to recruit them into the the organization that you're trying to get them into. Like, it makes no sense. So but we know that Dave Slyker is the one that put him there. Why? Because Dave Slyker was the IHOPU president. Mm -hmm. And put him in charge of recruiting 14 to 17 year olds. So that happened. Then um, the Grace Report was leaked this year. Well, I'm just just trying to go go fast. So the Grace Report was leaked. um, And we all found out about it. And we all like spread it Mm -hmm. um, to where IHOPKC had to respond. They had to. If you notice... The only time that these guys, and, and I want to say this to all the pastors out there waiting for IHOP KC to do the right thing, you I, don't hold your breath because you'll lose oxygen and die and you'll go meet Jesus. Because the only way that these guys come out with anything is if we pressure them to, is if we make podcasts, if um, Ali Henney writes a killer post that actually goes viral is if uh, Joel, Richardson. Joel Richardson says something like that's it, the only thing it, they just respond to people they never just come out and they like, don't want the truth to come out they know the truth they know the truth they just don't want it to come out because it's problematic all right you want me to read this yep all right Mr. Tebbett's last day at IHOP U was Friday December 8th Mr. Tebbett's departure was a mutual decision made in the best interest of the IHOP KC community and Mr. Tebbett's family. Not once during Mr. Tebbett's time on staff at IHOP KC has there ever been a report of misconduct or inappropriate behavior by him. In fact, Grace sent out a survey to more than 300 individuals as part of its investigation in 2018 and concluded, to date, Grace has received no information pertaining to Mr. Tebbett's engaging in sexual misconduct or sexual abuse while at IHOP. Wow, incredible. Yeah, I know. I, I like, want to read the whole thing, but I just have to stop every so sentence annoying. because it's so insane. It's like, okay, so you want to pat on the back because you mutually agreed with somebody who molested a child that they probably shouldn't be on staff there anymore? Congrats. It's you like, guys are, wow. I'm, I'm just so impressed. This organization is where we should all send our children. This this situation joke. would have been, like, the perfect opportunity for IHOP to show the community that they care, show the community they're listening. They could have said, you can say, hey guys, we, we messed did it wrong. up. We did it wrong. And we're sorry, but we're going to fix it. We've removed him from staff right. and we're sorry for ever putting him there. This was a mistake and we own it. You know, that was their shot. But instead he says, we mutually decided. Instead, they send Eric Voles to talk. Yeah. It's like, is there not a leader? Is there not a leader on staff there? that has the guts to stand up and say something, hey, Isaac, why don't you say something to the community that has truth in it? Not just, guys, let's fast and pray for the next seven days. Or, oh, that was only 1% of data points that matters uh, regarding Jane Doe. Like, why don't you now stand up and say something true? Eric is speaking for the ELT. He is speaking for you, Isaac Bennett. So whenever this comes out, you as the leader, it seems like you're okay. You guys all look like total clowns. It seems like you're okay with, like, y'all mutually deciding that somebody who minor shouldn't be on staff anymore it's like come on like yeah. it's yeah yeah right. so 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 here we are um and not only that but i just want to say this too uh grace the grace report actually said at the very end that they were very concerned about the community of ihop kc because the community is more uh is safer for a predator than it is for victims that was said in that same report but of course they're not going to quote that mm-hmm. so no, I number one yeah this, i mean honestly. it's whatever it's it's all just so like, the point here is this was on december 28th so you got december 22nd stewart's gone december 28th they Brad announced gone. that brad is gone um 
And then next is January 3rd. January 3rd. Now, I have I have in, inside information that it's not like, wow, so mind-blowing blow, or anything. It's just it's, I have information that says that they both decided that they were going to uh, – to step down at the same time, but Stuart told Dave to hold off for... Well, people were messaging us before Christmas and being like, did Dave resign? Did Dave, Dave resign? He's cleaning out his office. We've yep. seen this. Like, people message us all kinds of stuff, and we don't, like, talk about it unless we can, so like, they verify spread it. So they spread it out, out for impact sake, but it's all the same. So, after seven years of faithful service, our dear brother in Christ, David Slyker, has decided to step down as president of I Help You. David is also stepping down from IOPKC's executive leadership team, effective immediately. This was a mutual decision. Everything's mutual, right? Uh, made in the best interest of IOPKC community and David's family. We honor David's service and dedication. When he is loved by the family of IOPKC. It remains in good standing with the spiritual family. Additionally, the executive committee of the board of directors, ELT, IOPU's leadership team, all unanimously agreed to have Matt Candler appointed as the new president of IOPU effective immediately. Matt and his leadership team will be communicating all the necessary information with the faculty and students in the coming days. Thank you for continued prayers in the season. All right, let's read Dave's. Um, do you have Dave's yeah. thing? Okay. So that was Eric Fole's, like statement, and then there is one that Dave put Dave out. drops this one. Do you want me to read it or you want to read it? Um, it doesn't matter, but I do want to say something about that I've seen people pointing out about the previous one. Okay. Um, Eric starts it as, after seven years of faithful service, but that's because he's been the IHOP U president for seven years, but he's been there for like 20 years. He's been there since like the beginning. So they're trying to make it look like he's not as connected as he is. This is what people are saying in the comments. And he's stepping down as the IHOP U director, but he's not stepping down as a staff member of IHOP KC. And that's going to be shown here in a second. All right. And it has been my privilege and great joy to serve these past seven years at IHOPU, initially as the director of S FSM and then later in my current roles as IHOPU president. Time and again, I have been filled with gratitude to the Lord to have the honor of serving our wonderful students with a team filled with excellent fathers, mothers, educators, leaders, and families who excel in serving in love with humility. One of our primary goals as a team was to help establish the next generation of singers, musicians, intercessors, and leaders that could step in and strengthen and serve the wondrous miracle that is 24-7 prayer with worship. What we get to do together is beautiful to me as I remember and cherish these past seven years. I'm writing to you because my time at IHOPU president has come to a close. I'm stepping down from this role and stepping out of the IHOPKC executive leadership team effective immediately. The decision to step down and step aside was not an easy one to make, but it is one that I need to make for the benefit of my family, the IHOPKC community, and the greater body of Christ in this city. I am confident that the executive committee of the IHOPKC Board of Directors, under the excellent leadership of General Kurt Fuller, will continue to move this process forward to a righteous resolution that serves all who seek truth and reconciliation in a painful moment for so many. I am also stepping away for an extended time from IHOPKC. So this is this is the line here. I'm stepping away for an extended time from IHOPKC. So yeah, not permanently. Mean? It yeah. means not permanently. This crisis has been extraordinarily difficult for everyone involved. The weight of it has applied pressure to many families inside and outside of our spiritual community. My family is no different, and while our family has drawn closer together in the Lord and with one another during these past few months, the external dynamics have taken their toll on our mental, physical, and spiritual health. It is very important to me to withdraw for a moment to focus on recovery and health in every area of our lives. Thank you to all of you who have reached out to let me know that you are praying for my wife and I and our family, it really does mean the world to us, and I would love for those prayers to continue. We need them. I love our IHOP KC family. I'm thankful for your lives, your persistent reach to love Jesus and serve him faithfully. I continue to pray that the grace and mercy of Jesus would flow to all who are involved in the crisis with IHOP KC and throughout the prayer movement. While we are currently in the middle of a painful and difficult conflict, there is a beautiful day of reconciliation and healing coming by the grace of the Father. Till then, may we cling to his cross and be perpetually washed by his blood, allowing the refining fires of his loving chastisement to bring us ever closer to his heart and holiness and tenderness with much love and gratitude. Dave Slyker, intercessory missionary. I have Casey. So he still signs it off as an intercessory, intercessory missionary. So you had told me just right before we started recording that you saw the final message on October 20th of Dave Slyker to the I have Casey community, one of his final actual sermons. Right. Just talk about that for a second. Well, I saw it on, um, Brother John. 
Brother John out Brother John, of is he, is he in Canada. 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 Um, Canadian I, I didn't actually watch the whole sermon. I hadn't seen it, but I saw that he he had posted it and he posted clips of it. It was on October 20th after Slyker already knew that this was going down, like this is about to happen. And it was basically telling people not to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why did Slyker know that this was going down? Mem like, so he's confronted by the whistleblower. Actually, he was called in. He, he called in the whistleblower to confront mm -hmm. him about something that he never confronted him about. If you listen to the leaked audio that we put out in November, Dave in the whistleblower. But he demanded that the whistleblower was lying over and over. And he said that these are the words that he said. He said, if I can't say words and you believe my words, then we've got nothing. That's what Slyker said. If I can't say words and you don't believe my words, then we've got nothing of a friendship or anything like that. So this is what he said to, um, to, what are you looking for? I want to actually. There it is. You see it? What do you, like leaked audio? No, I was looking for. Um, Brother John? The Brother John one. Oh, I, yeah, I but, kind of want to play yeah, just yeah, pull, the beginning of it. Yeah, pull it up. Brother John. And so, so this is what he says to, um. I think you need to do IHOPKC on. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Okay. Oops. So, this is, so on, shout out to Brother John. Appreciate um, Brother John here. Um, All right. So he you... shows the beginning of this. Let's just let's just listen to this really fast so we can show it too. Hang on. Just show his video. So before you click it. <laughs> so, so this is what Slyker is saying that he knew nothing of. He knew like 1% is what he called it. He knew nothing of these allegations and their details, and when the announcement was made, until the announcement was made on like the 24th or something like that. And so we know that there's something going on for him to come out and say, because Mike Bickle knew, because Mike was talking about the black horse prophecy and betrayal being the big thing that's about to happen in the body of Christ to confirm that it's the end times and that the, that the dragons have been released from the third heaven or from the second heaven to destroy the prayer of movement and Israel and to distract us from praying for Israel. It's a dragon of accusation. That's what Mike Bickle was saying leading up to all this. Mm -hmm. So now Dave's going to kind of pull the same number here. Yeah, it's wild actually. On a campaign to like expose, the Bible says expose the works of darkness. I'm going to expose their works. Right. And so we throw ourselves at, you know, getting behind the scenes and revealing the deception and telling the truth. And we're shocked at just how absolutely little fruit that bears. It's like we did all that work to expose the liars in the media. We did that work to expose the disinformation to get the truth out there. The truth's got to get out there. You got to open your mouths, but you can't be silent anymore. You got to open your mouths. We're like, okay, we're so sincere. We're like, okay, we open our mouths, zero fruit. Just under the surface lies a profound demonically charged hatred of women that leads to violence. That's just one little area of bad fruit. Just seems like in societies and places where Islam reigns or Hinduism reigns, it just seems like there's violence against women under the surface. Wow. Yeah, and there's more. There's more. Um, wow. Comment. Well, it's just so wild to see him do the exact same thing that Mike Bickle did um, with his last message. It's like, you know it's coming, and then you try to, like, groom the audience for what's about to come and let them know, like, don't expose evil. Don't expose darkness. Like, are you kidding me? So he literally uses There's no the Bible. Fruit there. He uses a Bible like, verse. He says, Ephesians 5, have nothing to do with the deeds of darkness, rather expose them. So he says, you know, the Bible says, uh, expose the deeds of darkness. And that's what we're doing. So he, he says it sarcastically. And then he says, and you do that. And then you realize how little fruit there is. You, what is fruit in your, you know, no, fruit is actually less about like how big the kingdom gets, uh, Mr. Slyker. It's, it's less about how big your ministry gets, how big the kingdom gets. And it's more about the truth itself is the fruit, Dave Slyker. The truth itself is the fruit. The truth of the matter reveals the fruit. When I look at a tree and if, if that tree is covered with a shroud and you're telling me to eat the fruit of that tree, but I can't see what it looks like, then I need to see it before I eat it. You're telling us to just 
trust that the fruit is good. Oh, the fruit's great. Just keep eating from this tree called IHOP KC. Keep eating from it. Why? Because look how big it is. Look how great it is. Look how awesome the prophetic history is. Look how much we pray. Look how much we worship. Look how sincere we are. Our songs are good. You feel the spirit when we sing. We've impacted the world. Look how many souls we've saved. But the fruit, the fruit is, is underneath of the lifestyles lived. Watch your doctrine, therefore, and your life so that you may be saved and those that you hear you will be saved. That's in the book of Timothy. Watch your life and your doctrine. Let the truth be exposed about it all. Why? Because ministers come under a higher judgment, Dave. Ministers come under a higher judgment, Isaac. Ministers and leaders come under a higher judgment, Blaze. Ministers and leaders come under a higher judgment, Stuart. Mike, we all come under a higher judgment. So you can't say that we don't want the truth to be exposed. You know what? Expose it all and let the chips fall where they may. And don't think that the governing body of Christ rests upon your shoulders. No, it rests upon the shoulders of of the King of Kings, Jesus Christ. It re- the body of Christ rests upon his shoulders. I'll say this too, to any other Jane Doe's that are out there, that, have, that, that you see all this coming out and you go, I've been wanting to say this. Just understand that you speaking out does not ruin the body of Christ. In fact, it serves the truth of the body of Christ because that's one of the lies of the enemy is that if you say this, if you come out, you expose this minister, look at the fallout, look at the people that will fall away. No, 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 no. If you have the bravery, God bless you. If you have the bravery even to come out anonymously as a Jane Doe to a media source or to Boz or to a legal source, then that is powerful. And the truth of that is, Revealing the true fruit of a ministry keeps that generational curse from stopping. I see the curse from William Branham. I see the curse from going to Paul Cain. I see that curse from Paul Cain also in Bob Jones. And I see that same sexual immorality curse going to Mike Bickle. And I see it. It's going to continue. It's continued through some of these ELT. And it stops here. But it only stops when we expose it, Mr. Slyker. That was a preach. Amen. Well, it's just so wild to me, like, just to watch that and be like, okay, he's literally using the Bible to like, it's just so sick. Yeah. It's just so, so like, how, how can you still sit in that congregation after this, after they let Mike Bickle preach his last sermon about, you know, the black horse Right before. So are you addressing like let, the, the interns right now and the staff that are currently well, there? Well, I don't just, know. I'm not addressing anyone. I'm just saying like, I. how do you not, how do you trust them? How do you trust the man on the stage is telling you like something good for you or something good for him? Hmm. Something to cover up evil that they have done and that they have, you know, he's telling you not to expose the truth. Like who can sit there and like, Amen that. Who can sit there and applaud that? And and I get in the moment it might sound like a good word, but like hindsight now, like how can you still sit there, you know? It's self-exposure in hindsight. It really is. It's like we don't even have to do anything besides show what what they say themselves. Wow. It's so wild to me. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty mind-blowing. So there's a lot there. Uh, And I will say. Yeah. We've been, you know, doing our best to expose expose this. And um, Dave Slyker just resigned. So I would say that's some good fruit. Preach the gospel, babe. Preach. And, and people, there will be people that say, that's not the gospel. Of course it's not the gospel. But I'm just saying, like, it is good news that we have exposed someone that let a predator continue on staff at a ministry school recruiting 14 to 17 year olds well grace said he had there's no reports of him doing anything bad since oh congratulations you trust the man that did this to minors back in the day wake up okay wake up this is we're not going to protect predators any longer look at rzim ministries look at ravi zacharias ministries look at the process that happened they demeaned the Jane Doe's initially. They denied them and demeaned them. And then more came out. And then more came out. And now in his death, 
God have mercy on his soul. He is completely exposed and they've taken down every single teaching from their website. He's completely exposed. We actually saw, somebody said, are you guys going to let Mike Bickle's teaching stay up? And Eric Bowles said, which ones should he take down? And we literally said, what do you mean he? I thought he was no longer a part of IHOP. You mean he's controlling you? Of course he is. The man is in control of it all. Oh, General Fuller's in control. Give me a break. Give me a break. And I have nothing against General Fuller. I don't know him. I just know that IHOP KC is Mike Bickle. It always has been, and it always will be. It is the fruit of a man who separated from MCF in the 90s, okay, Metro Christian Fellowship in the 90s, because there was too much accountability and relationships with other pastors, according to Michael Sullivan and Sam Storms, who are respected leaders in the body of Christ. So which sermons should go down? I don't know, but there's definitely been an, a strong obsession with the life of David, mm-hmm. which honestly, I used to love his life of David teachings. Now that I look, I'm going, he was preaching. He literally thinks he's David. He was preaching based on, it empowered him to continue on in these immoral relationships mm-hmm. because, well, God, I'll just push delete on my past and then move forward every single time and then have no accountability publicly Mm -hmm. and then when it all comes out you're not even going to repent publicly you're going to hide behind stewart and eric voles and say god's your defender like this is a mess and some might think we're being too harsh but i don't think we're being harsh enough honestly i think the body of christ is weak in this area Mm -hmm. and the leaders like i'll say you know i read a i read a um i read a tweet by sean uh, Sean Bowles, who I've loved and respected over the years, but Sean Sean had a tweet and he said, "Those that don't have much to lose can be bolder in speaking on things that they don't know, and those that have more to lose are more careful on what they say." Well, let me just say, Sean Bowles was a part of IHOP Kansas City. He got part of his launch in IHOP Kansas City, and Sean Bowles um, should be speaking up about this, but. Sean Bowles is not speaking up about this. And go ahead. Well, I'm just pulling up his Twitter, and he's posting about Jeffrey Epstein. And I just want to say that it is wild to me to watch all of these men who, these like leaders in the church, want to talk so openly about politics. They want to talk about politics all day and post all this stuff, but they do not want to drain the swamp in our church. It's like, get your priorities in order. I mean, I'm not saying that politics aren't important and they shouldn't be posting that, but you're going to be dead silent about the biggest sex scandal in the charismatic church and like... And then you're going to call out people as powerless... Who are? Who are saying something. Like, could Man, you be more arrogant? Like, what the heck? Like... I'm trying to find that tweet. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know. I just kind of was not planning on saying that. But, but Sean, like, brother to brother, it is... It is the weakest look to be calling out Jeffrey Epstein and all this stuff and then to not call out the fact. Do you know Sam Storms? uh, Sean, do you know that Sam Storms called out Mike Bickle? Do you know that Mike Sullivan called out Mike Bickle? Did you know that? Um, Alan Hood, Wes Martin. Alan Hood, Wes Martin. Did you know that Mike has been completely, permanently separated from IHOP KC at this point? Did you know that, Sean? Are you still not going to say anything about the ministry that mentored you and the fact that you came from this and you're not going to show any concession or um, any just... And it's even like... Hand reach out toward the Jane Doe's that are involved in this situation, but you're going to post about Epstein and his victims. Like... I don't see, and it's okay to just say, you know what, maybe I should say something. And I'm not trying to demean, I'm just saying, maybe you should say something now. Maybe you didn't have enough evidence before, but maybe you should say something now on the heels of Francis Chan being turned away from Mike Bickle's office, Sam Storms coming out and saying something, Chris Reed saying something. When are you going to speak? When are you guys going to speak? When I, I have other ministers telling me right now, I'm sorry, saying like, yeah, my, my like our pastor thinks this. There needs to be more evidence. Our pastor thinks this. What do you want to see? A freaking video of it? Like, you realize that this man has been separated permanently from IHOP KC. You realize that Sam Storms came out, that Alan Hood came out, that Dwayne Roberts came out. You realize there's going to be major articles written. But after the fact, you guys are showing that you're waiting on the media and you're waiting on these big outlets. There's enough here to go, holy crud. 
we've made a mistake in our discernment. Go ahead. Um, I agree with you 100%. Okay, go ahead. Well, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, and if you're not, though, if you're not going to come out, you know, as a strong voice in this, then definitely don't come out against the people who are. Like, that's so... Read the tweet. Some of the most powerless people. Powerless? Who defines who's powerless? Sean does. Like, what the heck? Some of the most powerless... You sound so arrogant. Some of the most powerless people take on the loudest arguments. People who don't have influence have no problem saying harsh and arrogant statements like this one because they have nothing to lose. When you have the ear of people in authority, you think about your words differently, not... And I don't know how that ended right there, but... I can't see the rest of it. How can we get to the rest of it? have nothing to lose, you mean ministry influence to lose? You mean you're afraid of rocking the boat? You, you mean have your some, donations? Your donations to lose? Like Alan Hood, who had everything to lose when he spoke up against his spiritual father, who he found had been abusing someone that they were close to. Everything to lose. This is... I'm going to have to leave this now because I, I can't anymore. I can't. I can't with this. Like, And I I've, I literally would listen to Sean like every single week for, for a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Like, and I I just can't with this. I, I like some of these comments. So Richard Jeez. Matthews says, huh? I'm confused by, by this post. Sounds like you can say whatever you want because you don't have a platform. So no one cares. Listen, Which is exactly what it sounds somebody, like. somebody clip this clip right here of us talking about this spot and tag this man in it because this is this is blowing my mind. I do not want to be tagged in this. Don't I tag do. me. Don't tag I do. Me. I'm freaking on a warpath right now about this. This is mind blowing. Um, I do want Jeez. to. Jeez. I'm going to have to go to bed. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I want to read some of these comments, actually. Um, this lady said, I don't even understand what you're saying here. It seems strange to belittle the powerless when Jesus stood with them. <laughs> Ernie just said, that's a very arrogant statement. Malachi, Malachi co-signed it. Malachi co-signs he would. anything for Mike Bickle. <laughs> I think he's supported by their ministry or something. They must be supported, like... I don't want to talk about Malachi, but I'll say one thing. He does every single thing that Eric Bowles tweets. He's like, thank you for your transparency and honesty and for making moves. And then Eric Bowles is like, thank you, Malachi, for your things. And then, and then Malachi's like, thank you for thing." It's like this revolving door of praise between Malachi and Eric Bowles. And it's just like. They're good buddies. They're prayer buddies. It's very strange. But anyways. Whatever. Next. On to the next. And I think we're going to end with that. Um, we did We did actually get a shout out by Remnant Radio this past week. And we're going to have Michael Miller of Remnant Radio on soon to talk about Matthew 18. Right. And uh, that's going to be a, that's gonna be a, be a great. Um, yeah. So so we got a shout out by Remnant Radio. I think in order to play this without getting like a strike, you have to actually play faster time speed. So I'm going to play back oh. speed. Well, what about everything else that we play? I'll I'll fast forward it during the editing. Um, So this is Remnant Radio talking about words. I like Remnant Radio because they actually, um, what do they do? They they judge the prophecies at the end of every year, which is the only charismatic ministry that I see judging prophecies at the end of every year. They go, did that guy's prophecy from, hey, this will happen in 2023. Did it Mm -hmm. happen? So I thought this was kind of cool to get a shout out um, here. This review of Alexander Pagani, when we first reviewed this, we were not friends on the back end. I consider us friends. We messaged him back and forth. Uh, but this is the word that he gave with charisma at the beginning of the year. I believe the Holy Spirit um, is has impressed upon my heart as to for the year of 2023. And it will be a time uh, in the rise of the Jehus, mm-hmm. um, the rise of the wild ones um, who will be sanctioned by God um, um, to be able to confront uh, systems that have been oppressing God's people. Um, and they're not going to have that religious you know, piety and policy minded like most of us have that we're always thinking about the rules and the regulations. Now, I'm not talking about a revolutionary, but I am talking about the rise of a reformer. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not called the Protestant revolution. It's called the Protestant reformation. Why? Because a revolutionary wants to destroy the system and implement a new system. A a reformer uh, wants to upgrade the system. And it can only be done when God raises up someone who has a very militant, no nonsense. I don't care about the the, the rules and regulations of none of that. All I know is we're here to obey God. 
not. And these group of individuals are not going to be restrained by religion. They're not going to be boggled down by uh, church tenets and dogma of various uh, denominational uh, mainline denominations. And I'm not talking about, uh, you, you know, uh, insurrection. I'm not talking about you know, people usurping pastoral and ecclesiastical authority. No, I'm not talking about that because that, that, that's that's unauthorized. But I am talking about someone who would be fearless, whose personalities, you're going to see the rise of people immensely anointed, but whose personalities are not refined, like Jehu. Jehu, there's a difference between Elijah and then a Jehu. As much as Elijah was bold, he was afraid of Jezebel. Je he just finished confronting 850 false prophets and had them all killed afterwards, right? And then one message from Jezebel and he takes off running. Why? Because in that prophetic group there, there's this submission to particular rules and regulations. She's the queen mother and he had to run. Jehu doesn't care about none of that stuff. Could care less. You're going to see uh, a wave of digital Jehu's who will be able to confront uh, systems of religion, systems of, of sin, systems of uh, Jezebelic systems, um, and they're going to actually be the ones to actually tear it down. But at the same time, be anointed by God for that task. It's not going to replace the prophetic movement. Remember, Elijah and Elisha were alive during the time of Jehu. Elisha was alive during the time. You don't see God being against Elisha. But Elisha and Elijah played too much into the politics of the church. In 2023, you're going to see a wave of deliverance or just a wave of ministers yeah. who are not going to play those politics anymore. And no one is going to be able to write them off saying, don't listen to that ministry. They're rebellious. People, people are still going to listen to them. Even <laughs> churches where their pastors are against those ministries, their own leadership are still going to listen to these ministers. Why? Because there is a hunger. Yeah, there is. is a desire in churches. Even churches that don't do uh, revival and have might have lost their cutting edge in the this, in this spirit or anything prophetic, you're going to find that even in those camps, there's a group of people that are desiring that. And they're going to, and the only way that, that that's going to change is going to require there to be a jail. So I prophetically uh, believe that there's going to be a wave of, of raw personality, but anointed to confront systems and shake things up and no one is going to be able to stop them. And social media will be the means by way by which this is done. Well, it's going to happen over social media, you know, uh, you guys give me some thoughts on the, on the top end of that. What, what are you thinking? How are you processing that? Um, I'll turn it over to Miller first, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah, uh, I would say, man, it, it's hard to, to know for certain. I, but I, I will say that I've watched some podcasters rise up, and even in the charismatic ranks, calling out charismatic honor culture. Um, I'm thinking about right now with the, and this is a little bit of a touchy area that I try to, you know, we're not investigative journalists, so we've tried to just touch on this barely, but, um, I'm watching a number of people that came out of, uh, the charismatic background, like uh, the wake up and win guys, um, or a couple, um, their podcasts, they're actually calling out the, 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 the way they feel like the IHOP stuff has been handled badly. And that very much bucks up against the system where they're telling you, Hey, you know, don't talk about this. Let's just let the, let the leaders deal with it. Um, let's not be armed. What do they call them? Uh, uh, armchair what is that called do you know what i'm armchair talking about the, armchair quarterback no 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 no. armchair investigators <laughs> michael armchair investigators anyway um we appreciate that shout out there and and frankly i mean you can tell them like the lord spoke to me the word jehu two and a half months ago mm -hmm. he spoke to me about that verse and he said jehu yeah you've been talking about jehu for a while now yeah so it was okay. so it's kind of cool to see this and, and like, i hadn't seen that prophetic word by pagani which right. some of you guys may may not know pagani some of you guys i know some of you guys are complete anti-prophetic movement and that's fine too whatever you think about it you don't even have to think that that's legit that's fine it was just an encouraging word to mm -hmm. to see um, and and yeah. just to throw this out there, Michael has a story of his own Michael. that's very similar. Um, it's that true. if you maybe if you type in Remnant Radio, Michael Miller, um, it's actually from the House of Prayer in Dallas where his story comes out of, and they let him share it on Remnant Radio. On Remnant Radio, and it's actually regarding uh, his, uh, spiritual in, abuse within. Um, okay, type in "fired from NAR Church." A NAR church. Would oh, do you be, say uh, NAR? NAR, yeah. NAR. It's gnarly. Um, <laughs> Type that in and you can hear his story. And yeah, we're going to have him on here to talk about Matthew 18. He said he'd be open to coming on to talk specifically about Matthew 18 and the way that that is, uh, and honor culture um, and the misuse of the idea of honor culture, which I think would be helpful uh, for a lot of people. So, you know, we're in this. We're in this. Um, and, and what's wild, even as we look at it, like, when you have a ministry and you're in that system, it's tough to actually come out swinging on this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. One person that we that they also gave a shout out to was Joel Richardson. They yep. said, we really appreciate Joel coming. And I talked to Joel early on and he said, you know what? If I have to give up my ministry for this, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm talking about. 
like that's a different type of mindset. And I haven't been in full-time ministry for seven or eight years. So I have a different feeling about this when I watch this. I'm not sitting around waiting on supporters to send me the next check because I agree with Mike Bickle or IHOP or mm-hmm. how I say what I say next. We definitely have helpful. more freedom, I feel like, than a lot of people. But I'll say to leaders, maybe you need to trust God more. And maybe you need to speak the truth regardless and mm-hmm. stop letting your words be connected to your finances as far as your check, thinking you're going to lose your new Cyrus partner or whatever. God's got your back. He can take care of you. Everybody needs to speak up and speak out of what they know. And it, some leaders may say, I'm not ready to speak up yet. That's fine. Like that's before you and the Lord. But there needs to be a sound that resounds before the New York Times comes out. Okay. Okay. There needs to be a sound that comes out before those sounds start coming out. I've said this since the day one. I said, if if leaders in the body of Christ don't listen to their own flock that come with sincere hearts, next they're going to have to listen to their jaded flock. After they don't listen to their jaded flock, they're going to have to listen to people that are abandoned flock, people that have completely abandoned the faith. Then after that, they're going to have to listen to secular media. And if after that they don't listen to them, they're going to have to listen to the law. And that's what we're watching happen with IHOP. We need people to speak up. We need people to speak up. If you're a person in IHOPKC or, um, you know, in any of these ministries and you have a story to tell, uh, number one, if it's if it's a legal issue, go to Boz at at Boz Law and um, his his organization represents these type of stories. So that's number one. And if they can't take on your case, ask for a referral um, to be taken on somewhere else. If you just want to tell your story anonymously, even. I mean, you can send us an email. What's our email address? I always forget. Um, I I mean, heck, you can send me. Nobody nobody can ever figure out how to get in touch with us. People send us messages on Instagram, Facebook. Sign up for our insurance insurance page. They're like, I can't figure out how to contact you Just send me an email, blaze.foray at gmail.com, and I'll forward it to my wife because I don't want it to fall through the cracks. But, but yeah, guys, we appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Any final words, Christina? Um, Actually, yes. I, whenever you were talking, I had this thought I wanted to say, and it may not fit in anymore, but you're talking about, I don't even remember what you're talking about, but, um, but I want to say to the people who are like, oh, the armchair investigators, like in such saying in such a like negative way and saying, oh, they just want to like, you know, destroy the church. They want to burn everything down. Um, the armchair investigators are doing more to make I hop KC a safe place than the ELT ever did. That's a word. That's a word. <sighs> I had that thought whenever we were listening to Dave Slyker's uh, message. Let's just pray right now. Just lift up this whole process to you. And uh, we just admit we don't know everything. We don't know um, everything to do the right way all the time. But we definitely, we definitely know that we bring a sting Sometimes in the way that we say things, in the way that we're working to expose things, but we really want to do it in a way that brings absolute change and reformation. Lord, and if the root of this tree, IHOP KC, all the way back to these prophetic guys, has anything dark in it, then just expose it all. Expose it all, Lord. And if there's something that needs to remain, then that's up to you, Lord. But I pray also for all of these intercessory missionaries, these young people that feel pressured to save Israel through their prayers um, throughout the day and throughout the night, and that if they are not praying, then Israel's not going to be saved, or this, that, and the other. Lord, I just pray for a release of that illegal burden off of their shoulders. And I pray that they would come into the comfort and rest of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, the one whose eternal government rests upon his shoulders. Lord, release these young people from that illegal burden. Lord, for those that feel called to pray in in a house of prayer night and day, then you give those people the grace, whatever that means. I'm not going to assume to know what needs to happen with this place, but I do know there has to be reform. So Lord, I pray that you would pull the proverbial ceiling off and expose everything, everything behind the scenes. Lord, if General Kirk Fuller, if he's a man of God that wants the truth to be exposed, I pray you'd empower him and strengthen him and give him courage. Lord, that there wouldn't be sectors of the ministry that are sectioned off to different people's eyes, but the whole thing would be exposed. Lord, we ask you for Mike, that you would do a work in his heart, 
for every area that he needs to confess publicly that he would do it, Lord, that his soul would be saved. I pray for Stuart, for things that he may have covered up, that he would come forward. Lord, for Dave, same thing, that he would come forward. Lord, not just resigning, but they would come forward. Lord, anybody else in this situation, in this system, Lord, that they would be humble and come forward. Lord, I pray there would be a passion, not just to say the name of Jesus about stuff, but there would be a passion for the truth in Isaac's heart. There would be a passion for the truth in the in the flock, in that place. Lord, I pray for that the same spirit that was on Dean Briggs that night when he called them out to their face. Lord, I pray that you would raise up more and more in that place that would do the same until the truth is truly there and true reformation comes and the fruit of that would be righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for that. We pray for our listeners that you bless all them. Thank you for all these folks. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, guys. Take care. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Wake up and win. Wake up and win. Wake up and win. Wake up.